Just like was the case on Thursday when High Court Judge Alfonso Winidolo read out the verdict, the High Court premises in Kampala remained under heavy security. The seven convicts were driven to the court under heavy escort at about a.m. to hear their sentence from the judge. Justice Winidolo walked into the courtroom at about 11 a.m. gave an opportunity to the prosecution and defense lawyers to make submissions on the sentence they feel the convicts should be given. The prosecution team led by Lino Anguzu had difficulty convincing the judge why the convicts should serve the maximum sentence for terrorism, that is death as provided in the Anti-Terrorism Act. Anguzu argued that the suspects deserve to be killed to deter others from indulging in the act of terrorism. He also argued that because of their actions, people no longer enjoy their lives. The fear of terror attack is ever present. People have to be subjected to security checks before accessing public places. This is not only an inconvenience but also leads to financial loss to entertainment business owners and government which spends a lot of money in counter-terrorism activities. You need a security to come and check your pockets. Every time you are in the place. But the lead defense lawyer Kale Balaka argued that his clients should not be given the death penalty because the convicts can't have the chance to feel remorseful for what they did and also reform. The judge added that the death could give the convicts a quick ticket to heaven since some believe that if one dies for Islam, they will have seven virgins at their disposal. One of the reasons that were given as why the Al-Shabaab hit Uganda in July 2010 was the fact that the UPDF had deployed in Somalia to get rid of the Al-Shabaab elements. However, in his ruling, Justice Sowin Dolo said that some of the people who died at Chadon rugby grounds and the Ethiopian village had nothing to do with the deployment war. We are not even in support of it. And even those that survived will always bear the scars of the tragedy. And thus, the killing was indiscriminate, which attracts a severe sentence. The judge then adjourned the court to 3 p.m. to read his sentence. Shortly before he returned, the suspects had a moment with their lawyers. When Justice Winidolo returned, he called seven to the dock. He sentenced five of the convicts to spend the rest of their life in prison. These are Issa Luima, Ugandan, who confessed to have been the mastermind of the July 2010 Kampala Twin bombings, Idris Magondu, Hussein Hassan Agade, Muhammad Ali Mohammed, and Habib Sulaiman Njoroge, all Kenyans. I, however, do not believe that the death sentence would really assuage the victims and give closure to the indelible pain that society has suffered on account of the terrorist and murderous acts. Hassan Haruna Luima and Sulaiman Nijal Nyamandondo, who transported the explosives from Tanzania to Uganda, were sentenced to 50 years for terrorism, murder, and attempted murder. The sentences will run concurrently. Muzaffa Luima, who was convicted of being an accessory to terrorism or aiding and abetting the crime, was sentenced to community service of four hours a week for one year. He'll begin serving it after two weeks. Village will determine what the, co the community service will be. The lead defense lawyer, Kale Balaka, says the judgment was fair. After yesterday's conviction and judgment, I thought there was going to be this sentence. It's not clear whether the convicts will appeal the sentence to the Court of Appeal. Sudil Biarhanga, NTV, Kampala.